How is it going everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create a simple glow effect in Photoshop that you can use on any of your designs. It's quite a simple step-by-step -step process that you can follow and you can always tweak it to match the work that you're currently kind of creating. You can take bits out of it or you can add certain steps onto into the process uh, depending on what you're kind of comfortable with. And just to give you an example, uh, hopefully by the end of this video you will be able to kind of turn a plain looking cutout just like the one on the screen and turn it into something like this. As always, if you enjoy the video, make sure to drop a like and a comment. And if you wanna see more of my content, please do subscribe. But yeah, let's get into the tutorial. So now jumping into Photoshop, we've just got the clean cutout of Joao Felix and a plain background, just so you can clearly see what I'm kind of going to be doing in the background and then obviously on top of the cutout as well. Again, just to kind of give you an idea, this is the after of what we're going to be doing. So we're going to be adding quite a lot of highlights uh, around the actual glow itself. We're going to be doing some edge highlights and kind of making the, the edges of his face pop a little bit. Uh, adding some slight highlights onto the hair as well. A little bit of white highlights that are closer to the actual glow itself. We're going to be doing some overlay glows kind of on top of the cutout itself. And then just some final kind of color tweaks on the hair and kind of the face and just uh, in general on the cutout. But yeah, so we've got the before and then obviously the after. So let's get into it. So the tutorial version, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you step by step essentially what I've done and how I've built up the stuff. So in the glow, I've got four layers, as you can see, uh, it's quite uh, well, it's a really easy process with this. It's just two red glow layers and two white ones. So what I essentially did is if we get a brush that kind of matches the size of this, let's just reduce the size. So I've just got literally a red brush that I've used and you don't want to change the blending mode of this at all. So you basically just do a red glow um, and then we kind of start to layer it up. So after we've got just a plain red glow using a soft brush on, on, uh, on Photoshop, we then switch to a white brush and we want to reduce the size of this a little bit and kind of make it just in the center here. And then again, we make a red brush over the top of the white one. We want to just layer it over the top but now we're going to change it to linear dodge add just so it kind of it makes the the light pop out a lot more and it kind of gives a bit of a hue to the light as well and then finally we do a final white layer of a very very small glow just right behind the player so this is the one that i've just done and obviously this is the one before the one I've done is actually quite a bit harsher to be honest, but it's fine. You kind of get the idea. So it's literally just layering. You've got one red layer, you've got one white layer. Well, yeah, I've kind of reduced the size of this one quite a lot, but yeah, you get the point. And then you've got the linear dodge layer, and then you finally got the white uh, final kind of harsh glow just in the middle of it. So essentially what I've done, uh, but it's basically just been reduced slightly. So it's kind of like that basically. Um, obviously this depends on when you, where you want the, the the light source to be you can have it further up on his face so then you can have more harsh kind of highlights on the edges or you can have it further down so then you catch just a little bit of the face but yeah let's go with what i've done previously as i know it works but yeah that's kind of the glow and now let's move on to the actual player layer itself so initially what i did is I created some kind of shadows with the curves adjustment layer. So I'm kind of gonna show you step-by-step step on the layers and then I'll kind of recreate it as we go, uh, but then reverting back to the actual original as I know, you know, that actually works. So for the, the shadows on the back of Felix and kind of just areas that you know light won't necessarily be hitting, we create a curves adjustment layer. And then when we've got this little graph, we wanna just basically just pull down this right-hand side quite a bit underneath the halfway line essentially you can create another anchor point and kind of just make it curve down a little bit just to get a little bit more of a harsh shadow and now command i or control i to kind of reverse the mask itself and now we want to just go in with a white brush probably opacity of around 12 13 percent and you can kind of begin uh, to paint the shadows on felix so similar to the other one i'm basically just painting quite a harsh shadow towards the back of him as you know he's basically fully turned here and you won't really be able to see any light popping through so we're just going to layer this quite a few times we kind of want to go up onto the the back higher back area here uh, onto his neck a little bit as obviously the light's going to be bleeding on the edges here and here but this part might be a little bit darker. Same with his face here, maybe a little bit under the hair. 
then we can also kind of add it around his ear inside the ear as well as obviously light won't be hitting it under his chin a little bit and just kind of yeah playing around with the um the shadows really until you're happy with the result this is kind of similar to what i've done previously but i think they were a little bit more harsh than this so it's literally just painting until you're happy maybe a few more layers kind of behind his arm here but yeah you know it's pretty much the same thing now that we actually had you know very very harsh towards uh, this this area here where the arm kind of overlays so you get an extra harsh shadow um obviously covering all of the back and then going up to the face slightly but then leaving this area uh, a little bit clearer as the light will be leaking onto it and it's kind of half turned so some light will obviously kind of go on here uh, and then keeping this quite dark but then i'm just going to get rid of these this new one and then going into some highlights so it's literally the reverse of what we've just done with the shadows it's another curves adjustment layer but this time when we create it we're going to go the other way so we're going to bring it basically just over half of this top one here and then maybe moving the anchor point slightly and then again control or command i to reverse invert the layer and then just painting slight bits of it around the edges that you know that the light is actually going to hit so around his neck a little bit around his face a little bit on the hair kind of a bit more of his neck and you don't really want to go too harsh on this just keep it kind of very subtle as we are still going to be overlaying quite a lot of uh, adjustment layers over the top of this but as you can see it's yeah just a little bit of highlights on his face and just in general a little bit more of his arm as well as uh, some light could potentially be hitting that from the angle so yeah so this is the the new one that i've just done and this is the original kind of highlight which you know it kind of goes a lot more down but necessarily it doesn't really look too different so let's go with the old one and again we're going to just get rid of the old curves adjustment layer so now a slight kind of highlight on his face is made using a hue and saturation layer as you can see it is literally just a very very subtle highlight and it kind of introduces a bit more of a red hue uh, i'm not necessarily going to recreate this as you can kind of see the layer mask if i just select this it's literally just painted on a little bit of his face and his neck uh, just to get a bit more of a subtle highlight a little bit on his hair here as well just to kind of bring that red into it but what i've really done is you want to toggle this colorize um colorize colorize uh, tick box here just to make sure that you're getting a bit of that red coming through i've left the hue at zero because obviously it's red 57 saturation 18 lightness and then added the blend mode to the screen so as you can see it's literally just a touch of a red highlight coming in around the area where the glow is so now we move on to some of the edge highlights as you can see so this is the bit that takes um the longest i'd say is this little um highlights layer so as you can see it's just a touch of a an edge highlight essentially around his face just where light would be hitting so as you can see on his nose around his neck it's very slight like it's a very subtle change but it does make the image just stand out that much more and the way i've done this is i just got a brush using red so you can literally just color pick it from the kit and then i use this powder brush which i think works pretty well for this and essentially what i've done you go in with the powdered brush around well i'm going to go past the 100 but around six in size maybe five and you want to change the blending mode to linear dodge and you literally just kind of paint it in so maybe even less than that let's go on four so you basically just kind of follow his chin and just kind of paint it on this is quite a, a tricky process so basically just take your time with this i can create a dedicated video to this lighting technique but it is literally just painting on and you just want to make sure that you're kind of varying up with the brush size so i'll probably be switching between like three and four maybe even two just to kind of get that lighting to pop a bit more maybe follow it all the way to his chin there uh doesn't necessarily line up but yeah let's do something like this there is plenty of ways that you can do this but for quite simple pieces like this i do find that this method works quite well and you just kind of want to make this um on the areas that are going to be affected the most by the light so quite close to this original white light source behind him similar to kind of the kit so we can paint that on and kind of just keep kind of layering this up until you're satisfied sometimes i do go in with a bit of a bigger brush and just kind of painting just very slightly on the edge 
and you could do the same on the hair so i just kind of go in with a um a very small brush for this maybe even one and just kind of slowly layer up um the highlights just to kind of mimic the hair direction and the way that the hair kind of sits and just to kind of bring that bit of color into it and create that layer and now obviously this looks quite terrible to be honest i just go in with a brush or you can also go in with a mask uh, so this time we're going to get just a soft round brush in black obviously reverse this and then you just basically want to come in and kind of hide bits of this maybe even reduce the opacity of this brush sometimes it is a bit too harsh but you basically just want to go in and take your time and kind of break up the harsh edges so you can't really see it too much so now obviously when you go in and have a look at this it is just like a big line that i've just went in and i've just masked bits of it with this soft brush so it basically just fades out towards uh, the actual cutout rather than just being a big uh, stroke essentially going around the edge but this is basically what you've done here it is just kind of a trust the process it takes a while so you just basically have to go in and keep layering it over and over again uh, i'll just carry on a little bit here onto the nose just to show you but yeah it is literally just a trust the process thing so you kind of just want to layer it like that and then just very quickly i'm just going to use the eraser instead and as you can see straight away that makes quite a bit of a difference so when you hide it you can see it pop really well on the on the nose and then on the lips as well you can just quickly kind of go in and adjust this so it's not too harsh but you kind of get the gist of it so you start to layer that up as um, the base kind of edge highlight with the red so again let's get rid of this new layer and then what i've done is essentially the same thing but with white and i've just basically gone in on the hair just to kind of create more of a harsh highlight it is literally the same thing as the red using a very very small powdered brush but in white and just kind of layering it over the edge i'll quickly show you what i've done so it's literally just slight highlights kind of on the edges something like so just to kind of give a little bit more of a harsh highlight where the light is actually hitting on the hair uh, maybe a little bit further up if you want to do that but i might actually leave this slightly a little bit less but yeah that kind of creates more of an intensified glow effect if that makes sense uh, but yeah the more layers that you do on this it's going to look better and obviously just take your time with this like i said draw in your lines first and then go in with a layer mask and just kind of go in with a really soft brush and just go around the edges to kind of blend them really really well same with the kit and obviously same with the neck just take your time with this you want to go into the ear as well because that's going to be affected by the light but yeah just take your time i didn't really do much of the herb as you can see there's a few kind of strands that i've highlighted similar to what i've done here but it's probably not necessary as you can just add an overall glow onto this part of the face but moving on now we've got this just very very slight overlay here uh, I just did this using a white brush, so I'll just show you quickly. Using a white soft brush, pretty large, you just want to go in and kind of, maybe not like that, but paint in just a bit of a glow around the edges that the light is coming from, especially around, obviously, the harsh light that's behind Felix here. And it, yeah, just adds a little bit more of a glow and just highlights uh, some of the areas and brings up the shadows, really. So it's not as uh, basically a harsh black. Uh, that you get there so yeah let's delete the new one and now finally you've got this um, red highlight layer that kind of just brings everything together and this is literally just a linear dodge blending mode layer so i'll make it now and yeah so switch back to the red brand new layer you just want to go in with a brush and kind of paint in areas that you know are going to be affected this isn't really like very detailed you just kind of want to go in overall and you want to change this to linear dodge add obviously uh, and one thing that i did to kind of make this a little bit um not as harsh essentially i'll show you in a minute but i think this goes down a little bit further and further down his chest here but what i did i just basically introduced a blend if so you just want to double click on your layer and whilst holding alt you want to kind of separate this bottom slider of the underlying layer which basically just brings out some of the darker areas that are underneath this glow layer uh, and you don't want to do too much but i'd probably go for something like this and as you can see let's double check this one yeah so it's like a 0 to 44 split um and this one is 0 to 37 so i'm not far off but yeah so this is basically what it does 
just a nice overall glow that bleeds onto his face and just kind of over the edges it's not too harsh you can still pick out the details underneath it which is great um, and that's why i think it works really well because it creates a very realistic kind of light but yeah let's take that away again before and after it just brings the red into it very nicely and obviously it goes onto his hair around the edges and it just kind of brings together all of the layers underneath this so finally we've only got a couple of steps left the final one here is just a slight adjustment to the hair because i wanted the red to bleed a little bit further up his head uh, so again it's literally the same thing but with a screen overlay as you can see it doesn't do much but it just kind of makes these um, detailed bits of his hair pop out a little bit more towards the top of his head and then the final layer is again essentially the same thing that i did with the white highlight it's just a very very subtle again glow around the edges we're using a white brush so i'll show you again very very easy using a white soft brush not red i'll switch back to white it's just a little bit of something like this and you can kind of reduce the opacity just to get this to pop a little bit so as you can see it's just a slight edge highlight to kind of round it off but now that we've got all this done what i kind of wanted to do was bring out the the brightness and the kind of contrast in his face so i've just basically created a simple adjustment layer again with one of these so you just go in brightness and contrast i'll just double check so it's 17 and 12. let's just copy this 17 and 12 and you obviously want to invert this layer so control and i or command and i on mac to hide everything and then you just want to select an area with a white brush to paint back in and it's basically just this just to get his face to pop a bit more and kind of get this glow to be a little bit more intense but yeah we're basically there now final thing that we're going to add is the final light bleed overlay which is just over the top of the cutout and just everything in general as you can see it really makes the light pop out behind him and it kind of introduces that really nice light bleed over felix himself so very very easy this is again linear dodge layer with red and you're basically just painting two blobs of light coming from either side of him where you kind of can see the white the most change this to linear dodge i probably oh i didn't actually reduce this but what i've did was erase bits of the light itself just around his neck because it's not really realistic with the way it bleeds all the way kind of across his neck uh, we just want a very slight subtle glow kind of bleeding about 20 percent of the way in as you can see and that's basically the final look but yeah so when you put them all together this is what you get again let's just show you the before and then the after it's quite an easy technique i honestly use this in about 50 percent of my designs uh, i use this a lot uh, especially in kind of bigger compositions with quite a few players uh, one of my recent chelsea pieces kind of round up the season had that and it just basically gets a nice pop of color um, for the cutouts and kind of any any details are brought out as well and it it just ties things together it kind of gets that cinematic effect essentially and it's uh yeah like the piece itself now it's pretty cool you could add a couple of more bits in the background and it would be done it's a very easy and quick technique obviously the more you do it the quicker you're gonna get and um, hopefully you will um, be able to do this now uh, i'm not sure whether the tutorial was the easiest for, to follow but i tried my best you know it, it's quite an easy process obviously if you just follow the layers you're gonna get a hang of it uh, basically just a cur curves adjustment layers a bit of a hue and saturation layer to bring out some kind of initial highlights then you go with a brush and you do the white highlights with the white brush and then the linear dodge highlights with the red just to bring that hue onto the player himself and then finally you get the brightness and contrast layer just to get this um, initial area to pop a lot more where the actual glow is coming through and then the final light bleed layer to finish the look but yeah if you enjoyed the video obviously do leave a like and a comment down below uh, on what kind of videos you want to see in the future the next episode i'm going to be working on is going to be episode three of refine it and hopefully that'll be out next week uh, i'm going to try and produce a video every week now instead of every two weeks just to kind of get the um the channel going a bit more uh, get a bit more interaction with you guys but yeah that's basically it and obviously if you want to subscribe that would be great if you want to see more of my videos obviously that will kind of help you to uh, stay in the loop and you'll get notifications hopefully when my videos go live but yeah if you enjoyed the video leave a like like i said and i hope to see you all guys in the next one